Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palitska, international nail artist and educator here and today I will show you a nice and easy design, you can have a little preview of it in here. So not over the top and that's what we are going to do today, let's start! We are going to do this beautiful set, look at this bling, I really wanted to have some white and bling nails and I came up with this, uh, I hope you all guys really enjoy it. So I have left one nail because uh, it's a pretty time consuming set uh, to do the rebound, so that's my old set um, and you can see there's a lash glue, everything in there. I'm just going to quickly clip off those uh, gems and then we will do the rebalance just so you know how to do it. Obviously I'm right-handed so uh, doing uh, nails with my left hand is a bit of struggle. So I have just clip off the gems and then using the safety bit we are going to remove the color. So I've got just my e-file the dust collector on and I'm going to file the old color. I'm trying to file really even so I've got less filing with the hand file. It's almost like peeling carrots. <laughs> then using the, the top part of my bead, I'm just blending everything around the cuticle area. Again, just so I've got less filing. And the bit is awesome because it has the safety so you can kind of like touch it with this side. Okay, once this part is done, we can shape it a little bit. So I'll just remove the dust. It's actually not bad, there is no lifting on it, so it is going to be a very quick rebalance. I'm shortening the free edge. And then going to file the coffin shape to shorten it. One side, other side. And each time when I file on the sides as well, I need to kind of thin this out. You can see how thick it becomes. So I need to file it to the top in this direction for a nice coffin shape. Like guys, this is a game changer. Like if you will be filing this way. Okay, and then same on the other side. So this way you can see it how nice and narrow the needle becomes. I want them a bit shorter because in the summertime I'm much more active than I am in the winter months. And you can also see it how thick the needle is, like even if we have violet uh, the color already, uh, it just shows you the structure uh, inside the needle. So I'm thinning out the end of the needle, the free edge. Don't forget the needle goes curved, okay? So you can see it, I have been filing everywhere except the apex area because I need to add more product there, but I don't want any more product at my free edge because it's already very thick after shortening it. Okay, the next step, let me just brush away. The next step would be to blend everything around the cuticle area and push back my cuticles. So I'm just pushing back the cuticles. Basically, then you can see how much my nails have grown. Like the growth is really big. You don't see it until you push back the cuticles. Blend everything around the growth area. So like that has to be all nicely blended with the natural nail. If we do it this way, the nails are going to last nice time. So blend this out and then scratch the surface of the natural nail. Okay, so a couple scratches. 
by going like this, I'm also removing any that uh, cuticles which is on the nail plate, which I don't want. So sometimes I don't have to even use the e-file for the cuticle work. Okay, scratch it well. Clean the dust. Check for any shiny places or white spots. So I've got white spot in there, which means the product is loose in there. I don't want that. That's it. Clean it. A drop of the blue scrap. That's a nail dehydrator to dehydrate the nail plate. Nice and squeaky clean. Like make sure it's all good and nicely clean. Then extra nail prep. Actually, I'm going to get rid of this fan. The rest of the filing is not as messy. The nail prep always needs to dry before you start applying the universal air bond. And universal air bond works like a base for the gel. So I'm just applying it on top of the natural nail. I don't need to apply it on the extensions, but don't forget to do it on the sides as well. Let it dry for a couple seconds. And then we are going to use the dark nude uh, fiber gel. I love it for the French manicures, like for baby boomer, it's too strong, so it's harder blending, but for French manicure, it's absolutely amazing. I'm picking up a scoop of the product and I'm applying a nice and thin layer through the entire nail. Nice and thin layer. I don't need any more product at all at my free edge, like at all. And because there was no lifting, I can start shape, um, building this nail as well. So I'm just filling up the tiny bit product I'm missing there. Pick up another scoop and straight away going to move my apex. So it's a small scoop of the product. And fill up the old apex, like change the placement of it. So I'm really filling up the gap which I have created on the nail. Hardly any pressure on my brush. I'm almost like not touching the product because if you touch it too strong, you are going to wipe it away. Ideally, you can also direct your finger a little bit down the way. Okay, blending this part there. Check the side view and it start looking nice already. And now I'm going to brush away excess of the product. So I'm pressing harder, okay, pressing harder. So this way I'm, I'm kind of blending it and I wait a couple seconds for the gel to self-level a little bit so I've got even less filing. I mean, of course, you could play it a little bit longer with the brush, um, but I will just file the excess of the product from the end. And that's my nail end filled, so cook it in. I've got time to close all my products and then we can shape it. I don't want to also do it too thick, um, too thick extensions because we are going to apply the white... Uh, gel polish over it and then we will apply the top coat as well so we've got three extra layers and then if I want to stick the gems there is a fourth top coat uh, for the uh, for the gems after we place the um, mermind effect um, if we want to buff it as well so it might be too thick if you would do it at, uh, straight away the correct thickness so for the gel polish I always make the nails a little bit thinner especially that I love the look of the plain gel on the nails I'm not the fan of the gel polish, um, like I think uh, plain acrylic or plain gel looks always, I don't know, sharper, definitely sharper. Okay, so that's my nail almost cooked. The fiber gel is a file of gel, it doesn't soak off, it's a build your gel and you have to cure it 60 seconds. Okay, I'm just removing the inhibition layer, put my brush away. And now I can shape it. So exactly the same way, like filing the free edge a little bit, filing on the one side, filing on the other side. Remove the thickness from the nail. I mean, it doesn't look terribly bad, but I want to really make it nicer. Blend everything around the cuticle area. So all the products has to be blended in. So you cannot see the place where the product is starting. Like that's, that's all the secret about the lifting of the nails. If you can see any place um, where the product joins in the natural nail, that's mean the product might lift. 
I'm filing from underneath to get my side walls even. And a tiny bit more. So I'm checking like if they if they overlapping each other, if they parallel, and if not, I'm just touching up a little bit more. Like from underneath. Still far too thick. But don't touch the apex place. Look, when I remove the dust, you can see where I have created scratches. So everything around the cuticle area, all the thickness on the sides, all the thickness at the free edge, but I'm not touching the apex area. What the point to put the product and then file it off? Okay, that's a thin out enough. The shape is not bad. Maybe a bit sharper at the free edge. And then take a buffer. So the buffer is 100 by 180 grit and it's an awesome buffer. It removes lots of products like, and I'm just smoothing everything out. So smooth it out. Oh, that's nice and thin now. Another tip I can give you guys is just file the shape of the nail, like file one side, middle, other side. Okay, this way you are following the curvature of the nail and you've got a really nice and even surface. I think I'm pretty happy, it's not bad. Okay, so my next step is to clean any dust, inspect the nail and it's really not bad <laughs> for doing it with the left hand. So. Clean everything nicely and then we can apply the gel polish. I'm just going to also remove this wipe with the dust. Clean my hands even more. I don't want the dust to get into the gel polish like because then it looks messy. And we are going to use 173 which is Tic Tac White. So I'm just applying uh, two thin coats of it. Look what I did. I have pushed back my cuticles like by holding the nail folds so I can get closer to the cuticle. Okay, the first layer is on. I can cook it. And we will also use the, you know guys, the sugar glitter. Uh, we will just rub this in into the white gel polish to get those really nice effect. And lots of bling, of course. I will also prepare some other designs for you. I've got them actually already. Uh, so we will be recording like a shell manicure, a whisk one, some bombing gels as well, like sort of different uh, different things which you will be able to uh, see it on the channel, plus lots of more ideas. We actually need to, it's funny because it's still summer, but like we, we start, we will need to start recording up front uh, all the videos. And thank you so much guys for all your comments as well. I have been bad like for taking much longer to answer all your comments, but I do really read them and I try to give you a love hearts for, for the each, each comment. If I did miss it, I do really apologize, but like obviously doing a channel and also being a summertime and, um, and running the salon um, is really time consuming. So I'm, I'm kind of struggle with the timing. Um, but yeah, I will try to keep my best like so we can doesn't matter like what is going on and uh, that's we do produce always enough videos for you guys so you can uh, so you can enjoy them so i'm going to push this side of my nail fold otherwise i wouldn't be able to get very close in there peel this one 
Okay, pull this one down. And then once I sorted the cuticle area, I can just go all over, cut the free edge. In general, I don't like to cut the free edge like with the gel polishes. I usually end up filing it. Um, filing it anyway, like after the nails are done, because I don't like the look of it. Tell me in the comments if you're cupping it, the, the free edge, like, or you don't. So you can see it like on this nail as well. Actually, I have shortened it, uh, but I do file away the color from the free edge. I, I don't know why, I just don't like it. Now for the pigment, I'm going to cure it 60 seconds um, so I can wrap the pigment in and it goes in inhibition layer. Okay, so you, you just rub it in into the white gel polish. So I need to wait a couple seconds longer. And then I can start preparing the gems as well. So we will use some caviar beads, caviar beads, uh, some Swarovski crystals. I love those pearls and some other gems, like quite a lot of them, plus some gold like rose gold. Okay, that's my nail almost cure. So I'm picking up a little bit of the pigment on my finger. And now we are going to touch it. So touch it first. It looks really nice, even if you I show you guys something. So there's few ways which you could do it. Okay, so you could just like apply it with the touches without of rubbing it in and it has a slightly different different look to it i think it's more sparkly um i'm not sure if the camera can catch it but you can also rub this in okay so if we rub it in it's kind of give us those more wet look so i'm just rubbing it in So wrap this in and then either with the file or with the buffer uh, you can touch up the free edge. Actually one of you have left a comment about the chromes as well um, that you can use the primer. Of course you can use the primer as well. Um, it is a great way like especially on the natural nails and you could also use the primer uh, at the free edge of the natural nail if they're problematic, if they tend to lift as well at the free edge. Uh, so it's a great tip for you guys if you're doing a gel polish you could also use the, um, the primer. Okay so remove the dust and now we've got two choices. If you're scared, you might make them so it's really nice look and once the top, oh, it's really beautiful. And we've got two options. We could go straight away with the base gel and start applying the gems. But if you do the mistake or you need to move it too much, you might damage the mermaid effect. So what you could do is you could apply the top coat, just give it a couple scratches and then apply the gems. And to be honest, that's what I'm going to do it. It's a little bit longer. Uh, but I find it as always kind of saver option in case if something goes wrong, you don't have to reapply the white and do the mermaid effect again. Okay, so just a top coat. What else you could do is you could do the top coat with uh, matte, um, maybe not matte, not matte because it takes away the shininess. Uh, you could apply the top coat with the inhibition layer, then you don't have to buff. Okay, I'm just cooking it quickly. And then we can start sticking the gems. So for the gems applications, uh, you guys know I'm using the base gel. So I've got my mixing palette in here. And a drop of the base gel. So when my nail is curing, I'm just taking the necessary products, base gel, couple scratches, 
really a couple scratches in there. Clean it and let's play with the gems. So for the gems application, I quite like to use an, um, the gem picker. And actually guys, it will be available soon on our website as well, the gem picker. Uh, we're just waiting. Uh, I just placed an order actually yesterday. So it should be hopefully soon, because uh, as you guys know, like sometimes we've got, due to the Brexit, we've got some difficulties uh, getting the products on time. Like normally the delivery was taking three days and now it takes ages. Uh, just because of the paper works. Okay, so the caviar beads. We are going to pick up a couple of those large ones. And they are going on the top. Like make sure your brush doesn't contain too much base because then the um, the caviar bits are going to stick in into the base rather than uh, the needle. As I say, it is. A, I'm showing only on the one needle because it's a really time-consuming set. Uh, so for those of you guys who don't have a patient, I do not recommend the caviar bits. But I think they look absolutely amazing on the needles, like really, really pretty. And a good um, tip for you guys as well, it's best to do it like couple and then freeze them so they don't move. So once you're happy with some part, just cook it. Okay, so I have just created like a old line around the cuticle with the caviar beads. I'm missing one more. So a drop of base. And I remember I, like years ago, I really was scared to use those caviar beads in case they would fall off and clients wouldn't be happy, but they do really last applied with the base. Okay, so we have created like a, around the cuticle area, carefully put it in. Then we are going to use some gold beads and the gems. So let me get this mess away. Okay, so this caviar beads are cooked and then we are going to place um, another scop of the base gel. Those rounded gold bead. Arowski crystal, like a wee pearl. Freeze it. Another scoop of the base. And this time we are going to secure really large crystals so I can actually even take a scoop straight away from the bottle. And a large one. That's already pretty and it's not even finished. <laughs> Cook it. Then the next ones which we are going to use are those small ones. So you're kind of building up the constructions with the crystal placement and I think it's so pretty. You cannot go wrong like you just place one crystal and then you check where you would suit another one. So I'm just doing two lines in there. And then the teardrop one. And a second one. Raindrop, not a teardrop. Or maybe teardrop as well. Okay, now I want to move them so they kind of join in. Check. 
check if it's nice and straight. Just about. Oh gosh, breakfast time. I really need to check if they straight because then later on we are putting like those large uh, gold piece and it needs to be in the center otherwise it will look really really ugly. Okay so open it not using your nails so you don't break them. And then another scoop of the base gels. To apply the large one. So that's like a wee triangle and I think it looks so pretty in gold. I wanted it right at the end. And then in the middle, one more ring. Make sure it's in the center. Swarovski crystal. Check it again. Oh, it's so pretty. Really pretty. It looks nice just like this even. Like uh, I might do those little chains there as well. I think it will look even prettier. So for the little chains uh, I suggest you do it a tiny bit at the time. So I'm just picking up a small amount of the base. And now we are going to do some chains. Okay, clean my brush. I really don't want to have base in there. If you do have a base in there, it becomes more difficult. And another tip, guys, I can give you. So I have picked up almost with the dry brush. Another tip, guys, I can give you is try to don't use the tip of your brush. Okay, so you want to use more of a um, um, side of the brush if you can manage like obviously with the other hand is much easier and kind of quicker with this hand is really time consuming So I'm just going to kind of middle of the of the side, the rounded gem, the gold one. And then one by one, I'm just separating them. It actually didn't work out like normally I'm a bit faster with it. Honestly, it just didn't work out this time at all. Sorry, cameraman. Uh, I need to separate one. I really made this side so bad. Yeah, I just wanted to give you a tip. Try to don't use the tip of the brush because that's when everything goes wrong. And that's what happened with mine now. Don't give up, don't get frustrated. Oh. <laughs> I really don't get frustrated at all. Yeah, it probably would be quicker to just take it all off and start again, but no. So 
see with the sight of the brush you can kind of move them better and that's what I'm trying to do now. Because if we start playing one by one they look very uneven. Okay, I'm almost there. Yay, cook it. I quickly cook it. Hopefully the next ones will go much easier. It's funny because sometimes you can do it and it's, uh, and it's really nice and easy and sometimes it just doesn't work. Now just in case if, if I bump away too much base I have added a little bit more. So more with the side, if possible, of the brush. Yeah, this one seems to be a bit quicker. And now just touch it up, just don't break it. So I'm checking if it's even. And I feel like I've got one too much, so this one is too much. Almost there. So what I'm doing is with the side of the brush, I'm just kind of brushing them away into the correct place. That's it. Yeah, the second side was a bit smoother. <laughs> okay, last bits and pieces. So I want to... Actually, that's look pretty nice already. Okay, maybe one caviar bit there and one caviar bit there. One and one. Okay, making sure they are nice and straight. And basically that's it. I'm not going to oh my okay, I will I will just place last gems. <laughs> and I've got guys big dilemma now because um, for the last couple of months I have been showing you different design on the one hand and different design on the other hand. But I think I'm so liking them that uh, I might just stick to the same on my other hand. I'm not sure. Or I will just came up with something similar in white and gold. Okay, so just those two small gems, freeze it and then apply the top coat and that's how we create, how we have created this beautiful set. I really love it, it's so like, so me, uh, lots of bling and either white, black, nude or pink and that's kind of colors. Oh, silver and gold, I can wear it as well. So I'm just taking the top coat. Now on the caviar beads, I'm usually applying the top coat as well, uh, so those on the ghost on those kind of gold parts, uh, but I do not apply the top coat on the crystals because they lose their shine. I mean, they're still shiny, but the cuts aren't as uh, nicely visible and they reflect the light less. Okay, so just really nicely apply the top coat in. Check in the light if it's nice and even, apply it on those gold parts. 
and that's our set finished so cook it i will just apply cuticle oil i have been so bad in the summertime like busy 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 and been not applying cuticle oil at all so once i cook it i will just apply the uh, cuticle oil and show you the final look so nice and blingy yay i think that's a no oh, i'm not sure which one was the nicest set of the year hmm Maybe we should do some video like with all the sets, like a wee, yeah. Yeah, we should do some video with all the sets which we have created this year. Because I actually don't get my nails done as often. You can see, guys, the growth on them, like, it's really, really big. Um, like, for, for me, my nails grow really slow. Okay, so that's it cooked. I'm just going to apply cuticle oil. And take a beautiful thumbnail picture. And that's what we have created today. I hope, guys, you have really... Oh, it's so pretty. I love this set. I hope you have, guys, really enjoyed it uh, as well. So sending you lots of glittery hugs. And bye for now.